fast forward where you are, look at yourself in 10, 15, 20 years time and ask yourself the question, is that where I want to be? And if the answer is no, then you need to find a new path. Instead of just looking at the world, why don't you clean the weapon that you're looking at the world with? People don't experience life. They experience the life they focus on. One of my big questions is what advice would I give to my younger self? It's huge because I think that's the stuff that we regret. That's the stuff that we wish we were doing. That's the stuff that has been lost in the noise. When you ask someone, what advice would you give to your younger self? The number one answer is, I wish I studied this. I wish I tried this out. I wish I gave this a go. You know, those are the- All things that somebody didn't do? Yeah, it's all things that things people didn't do. It's always like something that either should have started or didn't continue. And that's really tapping into someone's voice, right? That's really tapping into what someone really wants to do. So right now, there's a, if you're happy, you are deleting all the things you could be pissed off about or frustrated or worried about in the world. Yeah. If you're unhappy, you're deleting all the things that are great in your life. Wow. And our brains delete and they distort and they generalize. So if you don't direct it, you get whatever shows up. What's wrong is always available. What's wrong in the world, it's always available. What's right is also available. It's just which one you pick. And so when you're in a lousy state of mind, you treat people poorly, you don't perform at the highest level, you're not happy. Yeah. When you're in a great state of mind, you treat people better, perform at a different place. And it's one of the reasons the humor is so valuable. Yeah. It changes people's state. What am I good at? What do I love? What does the world need? And how do I get paid for it? To me, those four help you unlock your passion. When you find the intersect across all of those four, you're making your passion your purpose. You'll unlock your passion, you'll find your purpose. The problem is we have a list for the one that we want, and we don't have a list for what we need to become. And I don't mean become to attract, I mean become to just be, to just get to understand yourself. You don't know what you need in your life until you figure out who you are. And so I find too many people rush into relationships without really recognizing and being fully aware of what they need from a relationship. So it all comes back to how aware are you? How much understanding do you have of yourself and what you need and what you want? Everyone has an element that they thrive in. If you take someone out of it, their element, they won't be the same. A modern day example would be Michael Jordan. He was incredible at basketball. You took him out of basketball, put him into baseball, no one remembers his career. We're talking about one of the best athletes of all time. Your environment is the environment around you. You can take a fish out of water and give it a beautiful mansion and a Bentley and all the money in the world, but it will die. And that's what we are, like our environment. Everyone needs an environment which they thrive, which we have to craft. Your boss, if you're at work, is never gonna ask you, hey, what, what environment do you succeed in, right? Like, that never happens. So we have to create an environment where we thrive. And then finally, it's energy. We, some of us love high energy environments, high pressure. Some of us succeed in low energy environments and low pressure. Figuring out your energy and the frequency on which you operate best will help you thrive as well. So for me, those are the three E's to really create a thriving environment. Know your element, know your environment, and know your energy. The biggest risk to your future isn't your competition. It's the distractions you insist on keeping in your life rather than doing the things you know you should be doing but aren't. People delay doing things they don't like for longer than it takes to do them. To be successful at anything, the truth is you don't have to be special. You just have to be what most people aren't. Consistent, determined, and willing to work for it. No shortcuts. If you look at all my teammates here tonight, it would be impossible to find better examples of men who embody that work ethic, integrity, purpose, determination, and discipline that it takes to be a champion in life. There have been so many times in my life where I knew I needed to do something, and then I filled all this extra time not doing that thing. And then the moment I did it, I was like, wow, that took way less time than I thought it was going to take. And not only that, it took way less time than it took me to delay to actually get to this point. And if I had only started with just doing what I was supposed to do, I could have done four or five other things that I was also supposed to do by this exact same point. You can choose a life of ease and comfort, or you can choose a life of service and adventure. Which one of those, when you're 90 years old, are you gonna be more proud of? 
do you work smart or do you work hard? It's you do both. You do as many reps as you possibly can, and you are you do it with the most leverage possible. So if I make a hundred phone calls, the leverage that I can have there would be how skilled I am. So if I make a hundred calls, I might get ten times more. And so I worked more. I had more output than somebody who has less skill. But the only way you get skilled is by doing more inputs, by working more. And so it's this virtuous cycle of doing more and getting better, and then you get more for what you do. Yeah, we need to be reminded more than we need to be taught. Bad things don't come in threes. Bad things happen, people don't know how to cope, and they allow one bad thing to snowball into more. Bad stuff sucks. The only thing worse is letting one bad thing ruin many good things. I was born in a very poor family. I never got a great education. You know, I, I failed all the examinations for what reason, I don't know. But later I realized I don't have money, I don't have technology, I don't have a lot of good backgrounds. We have a rich uncle or something, no. The only thing I competed with my people, the young people, is let's compete for 10 years later. This is what I believe 10 years later will be happening. So everything I do for that goal, I know 10 years later, this thing is going to happen. So I prepare for that. Because I know if I compete with him for next month, no chance. Girlfriend breaks up with you. Then you go into work and you sulk because you're distracted and then you don't do the same level of effort and you're not enthusiastic. And then all of a sudden your work suffers and you get you get put on a pip or you get fired. And then now you're fired and you don't have a girlfriend and then you start gaining weight and you stop going to the gym. And all of a sudden you're like, man, bad things happen in threes. It's like, no, bad things happen all the time and they only become interrelated if you let it affect your behavior. Here's what he said. Mr. Rohn, if you want the future to change for you, you've got to change. And he said, if you don't change, the next six years of your life is going to be just like the last six. You'll still be behind on your bills. You'll still be behind on your promises. But then he gave it to me in the form of a promise. Young man, if you will change, everything will change for you. If you will get better, everything will get better for you. What a clear message that was for me. He said, if you'll change your philosophy, if you'll change your habits, if you'll refine your thinking, if you'll change and accept some new disciplines, if you'll turn the corner where you've been in the past, go for a new life for the future, he said, all kinds of remarkable things will happen for you if you will change. Uh, I was hoping that, you know, economics would change and prices would come down, and I was hoping that circumstances would get better. And then I discovered from my teacher, that those things are going to continue the same. In fact, all of those things that happen to us is kind of like the wind that blows. And the wind blows on us all. But if you just let the wind blow, I'm telling you, it won't take you where you want to go. All of us must use this wind to take us to the dreams we've got, to the equities we want, to the money we want, to the income we want and to all the things we want our life to have. This is where we want to go, and we've got a good wind, but we must not leave our future just to the wind, just to the economy, uh, just to the structure of the way things are happening today. Here's what we must learn to do, and that is set a good sail. And if you'll learn to set a good sail, and that's what my teacher taught me in those early days. He said, Mr. Rohn, the wind is going to blow however it's going to blow. Politics are going to be politics, and the economy is going to be the economy. And however it turns out, that's the way it's going to be. What you must learn to do is not to wish for a better wind. That's naive. The key is to wish for the wisdom and the skills and the learning so that you can set a better sail. Okay, something bad happens. How much will it affect my behavior? Well, the person who is indestructible would have something terrible happen, and then nothing would change. Yeah, people don't know how to manage their emotions. I think the, the more, at least for me, the more I've tried to create space between how I feel and what I do, the more consistent my outcomes have been. Successful people see opportunity in every failure. Normal people see failure in every opportunity. Both are right, only one gets rich. It's the never giving up that hurts people the most. You pray for something, you ask God for something, then when it don't happen in your time, then you create these human excuses. Well, I guess it wasn't meant to be. I guess it wasn't the Lord's will. It, uh, it'll never happen. It just didn't happen in your timing. But I can almost assure you, nothing you want is gonna happen in your timing. It almost never does. 
How many times have you wanted to have something to happen at a particular time and date and it didn't happen? You know how many times that's happened to you? It happens all the time. Everything you ask God for, it comes in a process. It's going to happen, especially if you write it down. That's, that's the secret. Everything you want has to be written. This is a principle of success that isn't often taught. Um, which is, when you're growing in a business, it's very painful. When you're stagnating in a business and you're plateaued and you don't know what to do, it's very painful. When you're declining and you also don't know what to do, it's very painful. And so that means that all conditions of reality are painful. And so if pain is a prerequisite for reality, then it means it's just a signal that we are alive. Live your life the way that you want to live your life. If you had 90 days to live, how many of you will make some radical changes in your life? And most people raise their hands. And then you take a poll. You know what the majority of them will say? I will quit my job. Hmm. Why? Because that's not them. Yeah. They're not doing something that's them. You spend 40 to 60 hours a week doing something that's not you. Yeah. That's stressful. But if you're doing something that's you, that's your passion. And so when you realize that we have a choice to accept life as it is yep. or be an active force for good to decide, I don't want to just survive. This is not me. What it takes to survive and what it takes to live, those are two totally different things. Yeah. And you gotta be willing to work for that. Rather than, you know, in the beginning, you're like, I feel bad, and then you think that that should weigh on the decision of whether you do the thing that you're supposed to do. And then you start realizing that you can do the thing even though you don't feel good in about spite. it. And you start hypertrophying it, but I think the ultimate version of the hypertrophy, when the muscle becomes a tendon or it just becomes fused, is when you don't even consider how you feel. It's just not a thought. You just keep, you just do it. We don't rise to the standards we have when others are watching. We fall to the standards we have when no one is watching. The only work that really matters is the work that no one sees. It shows you who you really are rather than who you say you are. There's this line that I heard David Goggins say on Rogan, and I can't remember who he was saying it to or what he said in response to, but he just said, I'm David Goggins, bitch. You wanna be able to say that in the mirror to yourself and not laugh at yourself. Mm -hmm. And the only way that I can do that is know that when no one's watching, I work harder than when they're watching. As long as you keep going, you bear witness to yourself of what you are capable of. If a man is here and you want to be equal, and the only way you can get equal is to band together and tear him down so that you can be at his level, you're not equal. You're not equal, okay? You're a parasite. But you cannot erase the work ethic part. There is no getting around. Ain't no elevator to the top. You got to take the stands. The elevator don't go to the top, man. Not in the world of success. You got to take the stands. So I think a lot of us have the, the battle of the other self that we're the, the lesser version of ourself that we're trying to kill every single day. And so a lot of times we have this desire to point the blame finger externally, but wherever you point the finger of blame, power follows. And so whoever I blame for the life I have is the person who I give all the power over my existence, over my circumstances. And so it hurts, but if you turn the finger inwards and you start saying, huh, I don't like my life. The person that I need to punish or get back at is the real person who got me here, which is me. And so you may be right that other people did certain things or you got dealt a bad hand. It also doesn't matter because the only thing that you can't control is obviously the actions that you take. And the only person who's in control of that is you. You went to, you attended seminars, and you said your reason there was to learn more about yourself. Yeah. Uh, my experience has been people attend seminars, especially self-development seminars, to look for the answer. They want to know 
what is it out there I, I can learn so that I can be more successful? That wasn't your motivation? No, no, oddly enough. And I think probably you're right. I think that's what most people are looking for. I think they're looking for an answer outside of themselves and they're never going to find it. Um, I think by this time I realized it was something in me. I uh, met a man here in Toronto. He was one that originally got me involved in studying this, Ray Stanford. And he told me if I didn't like the results I was getting in my life, mm -hmm. that I was going to have to change me because there were my results. And he said, if you're going to change you, you're going to have to find out something about yourself. So I started to study myself. I found most people don't know who they are. They really don't. Thinking about what the version of you who got you here did, and then acting in the exact opposite of that as many times as you possibly can, and the pain that you feel by rejecting the thing that you used to do that got you into this bad circumstance, that's the real revenge. No matter who you are, there are bumps and hits and bruises along the way. And my advice is to prepare yourself. That there is a way out, that there is a way to do more, to get more, to obtain more. It is hard. It's hard when you're young to wake up in the off season at 6 a.m. to go train and work out, knowing that all your friends are sleeping in and eating pancakes. It's hard when you're on your way to practice way down with all your gear and it's 90 degrees out and all the other kids are at the pool or at the beach and your body is already completely exhausted from workouts in two a days. It's hard to throw, catch, block and tackle and hit kids when they're way bigger and way more developed than you only to go home that night bruised and battered and strained but knowing you have to show up again the next day for the, just the chance to try again. But understand this, Life is hard. You know, we're, we're, we're all writing a book. What's your book look like? What does your fucking book look like? Like, your, your life is a book. You got a bunch of chapters in your book, but when they close that book, how good was the book? How good was your book? What was the ending to your book? If the ending to my book can be so amazing because of all that was done not the money all that was accomplished so my drive is about my book getting successful whatever you consider successful if it's rich whatever it's not a magic trick it's not God picks certain people he'll make rich and certain people he don't he gives all of us as his children the power of choice. You have a say-so in that. You can decide to be rich. And with God's help, it's highly doable. But you first have to think it. The difference between successful people and non-successful people is here. I'm no better than none of y'all. I'm not a better person than you. I'm not a better Christian than you. God don't love me more than you. None of that. If you want to be successful, you have to change this. This has to change. Listen to me. What makes it hard is your lack of belief that it can happen for you. The fact of it is, though, it's very doable. But you got to change, though. If you keep doing what you've been doing, you're going to keep getting what you've been getting. A lot of you are trying to find inspiration and motivation with a depressed mindset. You're depressed because you're not doing shit with yourself. You don't find inspiration by not living in the grip of life. You need to live in the grip of life to find inspiration. Put challenges in front of yourself. When you put a challenge in front of yourself and you attack it, that's where you find inspiration. Try to be 10% better than you were last week. So if you're running 30 miles a week, run 33. If you're swimming 500 meters, Swim 550. If some of you aren't doing shit, you're 10% just getting off the fucking couch. The more you walk away from accountability, the weaker you become. Find yourself in the grip of life. You can't find yourself by doing nothing. I really don't know exactly what it was that gave me the drive or gave me the ability to visualize my goals and all that. But I think it was a combination of things, of growing up after the Second World War in 1947, I was born and to grow up with no food, 
with starvation and uh, famine and, uh, you know, my mother going around what they call hamstering, which means begging uh, various different farmers for food, so she had food for the children. So all of that, I think, had an impact. And uh, I always say that I feel sorry for kids today that they're spending hours and hours on that iPhone or an, I an iPad or computer. There's an incredible study in 2017 that said the most successful people in the world, healthy, wealthy, and wise, choose education over entertainment. And they don't give themselves that chance to just settle back and to just figure out what do they want to do or who do they want to be. Mm. And uh, so this is why I think that I made that kind of the rule number one is, you know, visualize. And I always compare it to that you can have the best airplane in the world uh, with the most advanced pilot. But if he doesn't even know where to go, he's just going to fly around until he crashes. Mm. And that's what happens to you in life. If you don't know where you want to go or who you want to be, you eventually just float around and you eventually crash. And uh, that's why a lot of people are unhappy. I think a lot of it has to do because people really don't have as much of a purpose and the mission and the vision and all of the things. The things that drove me from the time I was like 15 years old, it was very clear which direction I want to go. If you stay there, you'll always be there. You're here now, Will. Make a change, take advantage of every opportunity to come your way.